Hey everybody, how's it going? Seth here, and I'm joined by Callan Faulkner. Callan is a genius, and she knows that pretty much all the stuff that we need to know about how to do text SMS marketing for the land business. And this is a huge point of interest for a lot of people since we had her on the podcast and she broke the news about what was working well for her. And a lot of people want to know about this stuff. They're hungry for this information. So I invited her to come and explain a lot of this for us just so we can grasp how does it work? Like, how do you send the messages out? How do you reply? What do you say? All this stuff. We're going to cover a ton of stuff here. So we've got a little outline we're going to go through that Callan and I put together, and I'm just going to let her take it away. And uh, I'll try to ask questions as we go through it. If if I get confused about anything or if I'm just wondering about stuff, chances are other people are going to wonder about that too. So I'll sort of interject and ask questions, but otherwise she will cover a lot of the basics for us. So Callan, welcome. Thanks for having me, Seth. I'm excited yeah. to be here. Yeah, me too. I will do, I'll do a little intro on myself and then we can get into the goods. So yeah. I, uh, before getting into land in 2019, I was doing enterprise CRM implementations and marketing automation implementations. So my whole background has been uh, automating as much as I can, creating efficiencies, uh, being on kind of the cutting edge of, of using technology, using marketing. So when I got into land and we were sending mail, obviously my uh, my tech brain was thinking there's, there's probably some other ways that we could get in touch with sellers. So I went into a deep dive. I looked at every texting tool out there. There's a there's a hundred. You know, it's not, there's some mm -hmm. that are better than others. Uh, I landed on a tool called launch control, um, got my CRM all uh, hooked up with that. And then now we're doing a combination of texting, mail, ringless voicemail. We've got some cold calling going on. We're also doing some advanced skip tracing, sending emails so that sellers are getting eight to 10 touches on the, on the marketing side, which has proven to be really, really successful um, for us. So today yeah. we're going to talk uh, specifically about texting. Uh, some best practices, how it works. I do have a, a company that I created called REI Optimize, and we do we do implementations of this texting tool um, for clients. We do CRM implementations as well. So if you're in this and you're like, well, I hear what you're saying, but I don't want to do this myself, uh, we're, we're here for you, my team. We're, uh, we've done over 40 implementations and, and guarantee our work. So would love to chat with anyone that's that's interested. But today you're going to get some goods. So we're ready to Ready to rock? Yeah, I'm excited. So I think just to kick this all off, there's a lot of stuff to cover. It's actually kind of a challenge to break down, like, what do we talk about first and how do we introduce this? But to start off, overview of texting, why did you choose launch control? I know there's a ton of different options yeah. out there. Uh, what kind of results are you seeing and what kind of numbers have you seen to date? The biggest thing that I was concerned about was something called TPCA compliance. Anytime we're doing cold marketing to somebody, you just want to make sure that you've got all your I's dotted and T's crossed, even, even on the mail side. I know we, there are some areas of the country that there are do not mails. And so we have to be very, very careful there. We've gone into, I've done a, some consulting with some TPC attorneys. Um, I've learned a lot in launch control. When they first started, they really uh, dove into these, um, these laws and making sure that they are compliant. And also I call it kind of bowling with bumpers. When you're using the launch control platform, they do a lot of things to make sure that you're staying compliant and they're constantly changing the platform to make sure you're compliant. So I love that. That's what I want out of my texting provider is that you're going to protect me as much as you possibly can. So talking a little bit about that, I'll just share my screen here. We'll just kind of talk about their, their website. Obviously what you're doing here, Seth, is, is an evergreen presentation. So just know that their website may look a little bit different, but this is the uh, the launch control tool, the, the launch control website, just kind of walking through different options here. So they have three different plans. Uh, I would recommend most people watching this light plan is plenty to start with. I always recommend start low. You can work your way higher into the pro eventually. So this tool uh, allows you to send a batched text messages to potential um potential sellers to property owners. So the flow is we pull our list from a data tree, a price, a prop stream, wherever you want to get your list from. 
And then we have to skip trace that list, which means we have to get phone numbers and emails because when we pull the list out of a data tree or a price, you're just getting the property information, right? You're getting your the owner information, the acreage, the mailing address, but we don't have any phone or email uh, tied to that. So then we have to skip trace. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we get it into this launch control tool. So just to explain a little bit about this light plan. So it says 10,000 messages per month. Again, plenty for people that are just starting in the business. Obviously, if you have a team and you've got people that can help take leads in, of course, you can start talking about getting up on this on this core plan. They don't charge per text. So it's 10,000 texts a month. You cannot make phone calls out of this tool. You can only send text messages out of this tool. And then once people respond to your message, that's when you can just freehand message them however you'd like. So if they do want a phone call, you do have to have another phone system of some sort to use. I use open phone. There's a lot of other phone tools out there uh, to use. They do have a skip tracing tool in here. It's 15 cents a lead. I do not use the skip tracing tool. I found it to be cheaper elsewhere. Now with this one tool, they give you something called a market. So when you're texting out of launch control, everybody gets a market. If you go over here on this market, that is the area code that you're sending texts from. For example, if you're doing investing in Texas, I would highly recommend getting an area code in Texas that you are sending texts from. You can text anywhere in the country that you want you only get that one area code because they give you 15 miscellaneous phone numbers to send texts from. So know that with that lower tier light, you get one area code. I just recommend getting an area code near the area that you are investing. And if you need more markets, they, they are available for sale with launch control. With that whole thing, do you have to get the core in order to get multiple area codes or you could buy, just pay a little upcharge per area code to do exactly. that? Exactly. It's okay. five, I think right now it's 500 bucks a month for an additional area code mm -hmm. and they are making it, I don't know the exact details of, of the why, but I know it is to be compliant with the carriers. They are really trying to restrict the amount of numbers that each client has access to, hmm, interesting. Um, to keep, to keep it more healthy. Um, Do you say 500 bucks a month for just for the area code? For another area code. Okay. Yep. So, so you want to get an additional one. So with that core one, does that come with two? I think the core is still one. Okay. I think the only time you're going to get two is if you go to the row. This has recently changed. Let's see if we can find it here. Local phone numbers. Yep. So you kind of have to be sort of sure about what state or market you want to be working in, right? Because you'll sort of be I limited would... to that. Yeah. Well, you can, if you have a, let's just say you got a Texas area code and you wanted to start texting New York, you totally could. People mm -hmm. are just going to say like, where are you from? I, mm -hmm. We just say, if someone questions it, I mean, we have three area codes right now, but if someone did question it in the beginning, we would just say, Hey, we're, we're originally from XYZ. It's where my phone yeah. is from, but we're gotcha. very involved in this area. And I yeah. think it's more of a psychological thing for us, honestly, than it is. People have phone numbers from all over the place. In your experience, how often does that become a problem where people actively say like, where are you from or who are like, is it yeah. really a big deal or? It was a huge deal when we were texting from our Minnesota number, which is where mm -hmm. I'm, I am to mm -hmm. Nevada. People were mm -hmm. like, WTF, what are you talking about? Why are you mm -hmm. from Minneapolis? That was a little bit of a stretch, I would say. I think it would be a little more realistic if you got more of a, a Texas number or a Florida number or a California number and you were texting these places, but it was just a little unusual that it was Minneapolis. Mm, I think sure. that was that was just too mm -hmm. random. But you definitely would get, if you're looking for highest and best response, getting into that market's area code, by mm. far, we've mm -hmm. seen uh, in our market in Nevada, we have that local area code mm -hmm. and our response rates are always the highest. Gotcha. And this is going to be separate from open phone or whatever phone service you're using. I guess you could probably get multiple area codes from that, right? When you actually get on the phone and call. Oh, them. yeah. Totally. That's exactly what I say. I mean, open phone, a phone number is $5 a month. You know, maybe you're using a Texas area code to do the texting. And then you say, you know, Hey, a property specialist, or one of our property specialists would love to call you. And then they mm -hmm. call from that local phone number that you have from open phone. Cool. Okay. So we walk through launch control itself yeah. and show like, where yeah. is everything? How do you get around and how do you get yep. started? Let's do it. So let's do a little, just set the scene on what the heck we're doing here. So I kind of mentioned before, we pull a list out of data tree, you get your owner list, you skip trace it. And then the next thing we do is we import that list into this system. So we import our sellers with their phone numbers. I like to import their age. That's a great thing to see right away. How mm -hmm. old this person is because they're 80 or 90. 
let's not try to have a multi-paragraph conversation <laughs> with them <laughs> <for> texting. <laughs> try to get on the phone a little quicker. We get that list in there. And then what we do is we create something called a campaign. Actually, so, just one question on that list. Yeah. So you're taking your list from, say, DataTree or wherever. You're running it through Direct Skip. And That's then right. what they yep. give you back, is it basically the exact same list, but with some new columns added to it? Or does it look way different than what you originally submitted? How about I show you Here. what it looks like? I'm mainly trying to figure out, does that list need to be worked with at all manually by you before you upload it to launch control? Uh, no, like the way it comes out. So this is what you get from direct skip. So you mm -hmm. get there, the input, everything you put in there, and then here's all the additional information. So you get their matched first name and matched last name. This is incredible if you have LLCs or a trust. They're actually yeah. going to give you a person. And it's yeah. so important that we're using this because we're going to want to say, you know, hi, Max, not hi, Johnson Family Trust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's yeah, the that's a big age, deal. right? Whether or not they're passed. And then here's all their phone numbers. You'll notice that there's some residential, some mobile. Obviously, we can't text the residential lines or their landlines, but we will be able to text the mobiles. We get some emails. So I've been doing some cool stuff with those. More to come on that later. That'll be for next V2, V3, this module <laughs> emailing. Their confirmed mailing address, very interesting for mail. I've had a couple of clients use this for mailing um, instead of the a mail that comes out, really good result. What is that? Is that like they figured out they actually live somewhere else or? Yeah, yeah. So direct skip pulls from a database called IDI Core. And I mm -hmm. actually wanted to go direct to IDI Core, but I think you have to pull like 100,000 records a month or something to mm -hmm. have access to it. So the skip tracing process is basically if somebody goes to rent a car, apply for a loan, rent an apartment, they have to get a credit check. And mm -hmm. so that credit check, that application for credit check goes directly to IDI Corp. That's mm -hmm. what their data is. So if they're seeing that this person, Daniel Gutierrez just did a credit check two weeks ago, but he put his mailing address as something different, mm -hmm. they're going to pull in the updated mailing okay. address from that database. So you do not have to use this. You can definitely just keep using the mailing address you had before, but it is interesting to see if there was any. And I think we see that too. This is an owner fix. This is if they look at the property address and they actually find a new owner for it mm -hmm. that's more recent. This often will happen if the property was just sold a couple of weeks ago and the county records weren't updated and um, there's a new owner there. We've got that. And then we have, this goes on and on and on, but they've got relative one and then we have their age and all their phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Super helpful when we yeah. have, you know, hey, my brother and sister are also on the deed or hey, I we need to get a hold of, the neighbor and we need to go back into our direct skip file to look up their information. This is where we would come back to. And then there are a lot of cool things you can do too, to do texting to the relatives. And that's also something we can talk about. So when you get this list back from direct skip, which columns are most important? Like, do you need to delete anything yes. or just tell launch control, use these columns? These are the ones yeah, that matter. Yeah. They do the, it's like, just like mapping. So if you've ever imported into Pebble or imported into a CRM, they'll say, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, what do you want in uh, their phone number? Uh, the, the first three phone numbers. I don't usually take anything after phone three, you know, phone four, phone five. I haven't found them to be helpful. So I, we just put in the first three phone numbers. I like to bring in the age, the matched first name. And then I like to bring in anything to find the property. So I like to bring in the APN. I like to bring in the county, the state name. And then sometimes I'll do like a concatenate. So like the last name, the match last name, I, I do a concatenate before it comes in with the input last name so that it's easier to look up and map, right? Because if you saw Seth Barton and you looked up Seth Barton in data tree, he wouldn't own anything, but the Barton family living trust sure. would be the owner. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. a little more advanced if you're an Excel person, you're following along. But typically mm -hmm. what I always do is I import this list first into my CRM system. So all of our property, all of our contacts, all of our properties are all in CRM. And then when we have somebody respond, I can just look up their phone number right in the CRM and, and find who that person was, what their property information is. And this gets in a little bit more advanced, but for those of you that are following along, even if this is a Google sheet, just having a master Google sheet of all mm -hmm. of your people and um, properties and just having the, honestly, just the sellers. Let's just talk about this guy. So this is Frank. He's got a property in Walton, Florida, and he's right now cold. He's never responded to us. But when he does respond and does reach out, we mark him as responded. And you mm -hmm. can just have this be a little drop down in a Google sheet. And the importance of this is because if you guys are going to do, let's say you do a, a round of mail, let's say you do a round of texting, 
you only want to text the people that didn't respond to your mailing campaign. And we have to start tracking that somewhere who actually responded. And then after we do this texting, maybe we want to call them or send them another round of mail. I want you to be able to come into your to the system or just into Google Sheets or wherever and say, hey, I want to see all the sellers in this area that are still cold. And that's your marketing list for an area. Gotcha. So when a person responds, you would go into that Google Sheet or whatever CRM system and yep. you or your VA would just indicate that they did respond just so that you could sort yep. those appropriately. Gotcha. Absolutely. The other way of doing it is if you want to just do it, I'm a little lazy sometimes. So I just do it monthly. I go into launch control. I go to export prospects and I just export everyone that told me they weren't interested. I export everyone that put on the DNC. And then I just import it into the CRM and just update those records. Okay. And we, we update on the APN. One quick question back on that list. How you said phone one, phone two, and phone three. So is phone one like most likely to be yes. the one? Like what, how are those differentiated? That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Most okay. likely to least likely. What some of my clients do is anyone that does not have a mobile, that's their mailing list right away. Mm -hmm. okay. And so there's a lot of people that won't have a mobile on mm -hmm. here, like Meadows, wherever this is. Oh, this is a water authority, but probably why they don't have a cell phone number on there. And I didn't remove LLCs out of here. So we can usually assume those phone numbers are cell phone numbers that can receive a text. Unless they're marked as residential. So gotcha. residential is a landline. Oh, gotcha. So it tells you right there. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Those relative phone numbers you mentioned. So those don't really get imported, but they're just there in case the person happens to say, Hey, contact this person too. Like that's when you would go back and get it. That's or do you right. need to? Okay. I do have a couple clients and even myself, I have an area in Nevada where we've been marketing to them for three years. You better believe I'm going to send the relatives a texting campaign. All the mm -hmm. people that are still cold, they've never responded. I'm going to pull their, their relatives and say, you know, hey there, I'm so sorry if you're not the right person. I've been looking for Buzz Lynn. I believe you may be related to him. We're looking for, um, we're interested in his property in Nevada. But would, do you happen to know who he is? Do I have the right person? A little sneaky way of doing it. Cool.